so I'm coming back to you with another video. I like to mention three things. One is that um, you people remember after the inauguration when uh, the deputy president was on um, attack mode of the former president, Uru Kenyatta. I remember this time he said that uh, there is money that was carried in sacks in billions taken to Wilson and then carried by choppers to different homes and he would be telling Kenyans who took that money and where it went. Um, the deputy president should not leave office without telling us who exactly stole our money. This money is a lot. So I'm just hoping that uh, he will not be impeached. The Senate will not confirm his impeachment before he tells us who carried our money in sacks and took it through Wilson to their homes. It's very important that we learn that. If you impeach the deputy president before he tells us this, this is injustice to Kenyans. Secondly, yesterday on KTN News, on News Hour, we did something called the wild card. And we mentioned a number of people who we think are potential replacements to the deputy president, just like I told you weeks ago, that he's going to get impeached by the National Assembly. And it happened. I'm telling you again, the Senate is going to confirm this impeachment and the judiciary will not be able to help. And I'll tell you why before the end of this video. Uh, so the second thing about the wild card, one of the wildest cards we played or wildest card we played last night was Kalonzo Musioka. You know, my guests, they're so convinced that Kalonzo Musioka will run for the prize. If he's given the position of the deputy president, what do you guys think? That if Kalonzo Musioka is today called by President William Ruto and told you are the deputy, since Alipita Katikatiao 2020, 2007, 2008, Alipita Katikatia Raila Odinga na the later President Moi Kibaki and he became the deputy president, um, the vice president then. So they are convinced that he could become the uh, deputy president. If he's offered that chance, he'll run for it. I am not convinced that Kalonzo can... Uh, betray his own people his own party but let's see now to my last point uh the issue i've just mentioned about um the courts not being able to help the deputy president and this is my hypothesis let me tell you 2010 constitution recognized that the deputy president's office has to be protected in the constitution that's why the president cannot fire the deputy president that's why they need to go through the national assembly so this power was taken out of the president's hands and given to the National Assembly by this constitution. And that is the reason why the National Assembly has the checks and balances. That is why the threshold is so high that only two-thirds can impeach a deputy president or can remove a president by way of impeachment. So this power was taken from the president and given to the to parliament, to the legislative arm of this government. And then they put the threshold so high for you to impeach a president or deputy president is not a walk in the park. Two-thirds majority. Now, this power is so intense that the Constitution cannot donate it to anyone else. The power to impeach removal of a president or a deputy president cannot be donated to anyone else. In my own hypothesis, even to the judiciary. The judiciary cannot possess this power to impeach. Otherwise, the Constitution would have been explicit and given it to the judiciary. To the judiciary, you can impeach the president. You can remove the deputy president. But this power cannot even be donated, in my opinion, to the judiciary by the Constitution. That's why they gave it to the lawmakers, the legislative arm of the government. And the procedure is, it originates from the National Assembly, then it goes to the Senate. That confirms it through a trial in the national, uh, in the floor, sorry, on the floor of the Senate, either through plenary, which they call the Committee of the Whole House, or through a, a panel or a committee, 11 members, which was shut down yesterday. Now, my point is this. If this power cannot be given to the judiciary, how will they save the deputy president if he goes to the judiciary? I'll tell you why they can't. This is my own hypothesis as a lawyer. is because the safeguards, the checks and balances needed to be solid. Now, what the judiciary can do the only thing the judiciary will do will examine the process. And as always, I like to take you through the chronology to justify myself. Did you hear the deputy president questioning the procedure? Did you hear the deputy president questioning public participation? Now, these are the only reasons. Did you hear Paul Muite and the rest of the lawyers questioning the process? This is the only way that the judiciary can get involved, not in the act.
So they will look at it and say, because of the procedure, this thing is flawed. Because there was no adequate public participation, this thing is flawed. Because this was not followed, this thing is flawed. That's why the National Assembly, when um, the judiciary decided that public participation has to happen in all the 290 constituencies and not only the 47 counties, Parliament complied the next day because they know how important procedure is. So my point today, what is it? My point is this. The judiciary cannot interfere with the political process, cannot amass, cannot claim powers that does not belong to it. The power to impeach is granted to the National Assembly, is granted to the Senate and not to the judiciary. They cannot save Rigadi Geshagwa. The only thing that can happen is they'll examine the process if it was by the book. Believe me, they are not going to overturn that impeachment. All right. That's my word for the day, for today. And then, Mpande Miti.